We're going to be talking about inductive versus deductive reasoning. Um, a conjecture is a statement based on an observation. Inductive reasoning is using a pattern to write a conjecture. Counterexample, we already talked about this in the last section, but just as a, um, as a vocab term, this is proving something false. So in example one, sketch the next figure based on the pattern. So it's a pattern, so it's inductive reasoning. We can see that this is going to be in a triangle, and we have one. This one has two sides as far as dots. This one has three, so the next one is obviously going to have four. And fill within. <clears throat> We can test a conjecture about the given quantity. Um, personally, I think this is easier if you uh, test a conjecture or test, you know, some different options and then make the conjecture. I just think it's easier to go that route. Um, just because then if you go one route with it, if you make the conjecture right away, you might not be realizing something. So the product of any two even integers, when you're talking about the numbers, make sure that you're using... Um, positive and negative numbers because that's going to play into this a little bit or it could potentially play into this I should say. So I have negative 2 times negative 4 gives me positive 8. If I have negative 2 times positive 8 I get negative 16. Um, if I have positive 10 times positive 12, I get 120. So generally when I'm testing it, I do about three. So notice I did two negatives, one negative, no negative, kind of thinking through those. Um, and every time I did different numbers. So it's not like I always use the two and the four, right? So anyway, looking at our overall answers, I have eight, negative 16, and 120. What do those all have in common? My answer is always even. Um, like I said, those examples that you use, so those three right there, are going to be your, your testing of your conjecture. Like I said, I go the reverse way. So, find a counterexample to prove it's false. The sum of a positive and a negative integer will always be positive. So, sum is addition. So, if I need to add a positive and a negative integer, it'll always be positive. I'm showing why that's false. So instead, I need this to be a negative number. I shouldn't have crossed that out, but my goal is to have a negative number. So here's my counter example. If I have two plus negative 10, my answer is negative eight. That would be my counter example. I'm giving a situation where the answer is not positive. Okay, so now looking at our deductive versus inductive reasoning. So obviously we already talked about inductive, but deductive is using definitions or facts. So, 
deductive definitions. That's how I remember it, because they both are DD. Um, and inductive is using those patterns. So then we have the law of detachment and law of syllogism. So the law of detachment states if P, then Q. Okay, so then they start with an if statement. Um, and then what they do is they'll give you a P, which is then going to mean Q is true. Okay, and we're going to... Oh, we don't have any of those. Okay, so let me give you a situation. Let me give you two examples right here. Okay, so the first example... So if you study for a test, then you will get an A. You studied for an hour. Okay, so this is how this is going to be set up, okay? Um, so if I look at this, my P is my study part, right? Then my Q is to get an A. Well, so I have the if P, then Q. Then they'll give you a second statement. That second statement will no longer have an if and a then. And it will be one of the two options. It will either be the P or the Q first. This only works if P is first. So then what they're gonna say, or we're gonna want you to do, is then you're gonna give the conclusion. So this is possible. Therefore, you got an A. And the reason why I say this is because a lot of students get confused on how this is set up. You have to have it in that order. If this right here was switched around and that they say you got an A, you cannot make the, the assumption that you studied for the test because it's not in the correct if-then statement order. Okay, so I can't stress that enough. All right, love syllogism. Similar setup. Um, there's two if statements, so... So if P, then Q. If Q, then R. Therefore, if P, then R. So again, notice you have to have that set up. Um, to give you an example here. If you have a test tomorrow, so if you have a test tomorrow, then you will study. If you study, you will get an A. Sorry, I was trying to make those short. Okay, so we know that this is the law of syllogism because it's two if statements. And we look at the order. Test tomorrow is my P. Q is my study, which matches up. And then last but not least is given a poor color choice. Okay. So your, your ones in the middle have to be the same there. You could have your two statements flip-flopped. You might have the statement if Q then R first, and then the if P then Q. So just know that those could change. Um, but again, this only works if the setup is correct. You will see a lot of times what they'll ask you is an if P then Q, if P then R. They'll give you that and they won't have a commonality. So just something to think about. 
um, you need an, uh, a similarity between a then and an if. Okay, mm -hmm. so just something to note. Like I said, it seems kind of simple, but you'll realize what I mean when it gets a little confusing and you have to think about what is the proper order. Um, something also is I will not tell you the law of detachment. I will not write down on the board. The law of detachment is this. The law of syllogism is this. Okay, so you need to know the correct order between the two. All right, last example. Decide whether inductive or deductive reasoning is used to reach the conclusion. Explain your reasoning. So if the sum of the digits of a number is divisible by 3, then the number is divisible by 3. The sum of the digits of the number 147 is 12. So the number 147 is divisible by 3. So if I'm looking at this, the statement here, just thinking about my if, p, then q stuff. So the sum of divisible. And going here. So if I'm looking at this, technically speaking, this one here, it kind of follows the yellow, but here's a slight difference. This is 12, and that one's this three. Um, so there is a little bit of a difference, but if I'm looking at this, I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to decide if it's inductive or deductive reasoning. Um, because this is something that you can test, and it's not necessarily a pattern, this is a fact, this is going to be deductive reasoning. It's something that you can actually try and use numbers with. There isn't like a pattern where you're trying to figure out, okay, the number of dots. This is something you can actually try and test and know if it's true or not. Okay. So that's why this one's deductive reasoning. But just looking at the format, it's not exactly perfect, but just something to think about. So that's inductive versus deductive reasoning. Um, there's a lot based on the law of detachment and law of syllogism, so just something to note there, okay?